Welcome to the Adding Extra Base Material Assemblies tutorial for the Impact Estimator for Buildings. Extra Basic Materials is a different kind of assembly from the previous types where you input some dimensions and the Impact Estimator calculates material quantities. In Extra Base Materials, you can input any quantity you wish for any material you wish. This can be useful when the calculated material quantities are either too high or too low compared to your actual design, and you can either add or subtract materials in order to match your design. This video covers adding extra basic materials manually. Importing a bill of materials from a CAD program is covered in another tutorial. So I've got a project already loaded in the tree. This is the project we've been building in our tutorials. I want to add extra base materials. I'm going to right click on the project node here, add assemblies, extra base materials, and the extra base materials form will open up. All of the materials in the impact estimator are available in extra base materials. And if you click on this list down here, that's where they all are. And you can choose from there if you want. Or if you're searching for materials, you can filter them up here with material type. For instance, if I click concrete, all the concretes will be available in the list. Or if I go up to the search string and let's say I search for steel, then all of the materials with the word steel in it will show up in the list. I want to add a material that we haven't used before so we can see it easily in the bill of materials. So I'm going to search up here for air. Here I get air barrier. I'm going to click add here and air barrier is added to the form below, the table below here. We could do this in SI or Imperial units. We're going to stay with Imperial and here's some information here that you can't edit. It's really just the name of the material and the unit. So we're talking SF, so square feet here. You can only input an amount here. So I'm going to put in for argument purposes the uh, 10 square feet here. When I click return, it says here it's going to add a net amount of 10.2 square feet to the bill of materials. That is because every material in the impact estimator has a construction waste factor, which is listed in this column here. And this material happens to have a construction waste factor of 2% or 0 0.02. So with 10 square feet, we're going to add in an extra 2%, that's 0.2 square feet, and that's what gets added to the bill of materials. If I wanted to, I could add as many other materials as I wanted to, or I can remove materials or clear them all if I want to start from scratch. So for now, I'm going to click OK, and that is going to add the extra base materials assembly group to our project tree, and here is our extra base materials assembly. Just to show you, I'm going to do a quick view of the bill of materials. I click reports at the top and the bill of materials button here, and here is the bill of materials for our entire project, and you see here I've added air barrier of 10.2 square feet. I'm going to close that. If for some reason you need to add exactly, let's say, 10 square feet of extra base materials, you're going to have to do a little bit of math beforehand. So I'm going to reopen the form here. I've got air barrier here, 10 square feet, but let's say I don't want to add 10.2 to the bill of materials. I want to add 10. I need to figure out what number in amount will give me the net amount of 10 here. So the math is simple, it's 1 divided by 1.02, which is the percentage added here, which for bill of materials happens to be 9.8039 square feet. And I hit return, and I've got 10 square feet here. It's lots of decimal points, but that's going to round off to 10 square feet. So I'm going to click OK again here and then reopen the bill of materials and you see here I've got an air barrier of 10 square feet added here. Now the real purpose for extra base materials is to augment the calculated totals from our structural calculations. So to demonstrate that I'm just going to start a very quick new project here. I'm just going to call it a test. I'm going to leave everything in the project level data as default, and I'm going to quickly add 
a foundation footing here. Call it test again. I'm going to give it a length of 100 feet, a width of 3 feet, and a thickness of 12, in, 12 inches. Oh, pardon me, I'm in Imperial. I'm in metric here, so I'm going to switch to Imperial. 3 feet and 12 inches. I'm going to leave everything at default. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to show you the bill of materials for this assembly. So up here in Select Project, I've got choice of test and tutorial. I'm going to choose test. I'm going to hit bill of materials. And it shows me here that I've got 8.9 meters cubed. Again, I'm in SI, so I'm going to switch to Imperial. I've got 11.6 cubic yards of concrete, and I've got 0.186 tons of rebar. Now let's say that um, for some reason I need a lot more rebar in this and this assembly and I, I need to account for that. Well, I can go in here to test, right click on test, add extra base of materials, get extra base of materials. I'm looking for rebar, so I'll put in a third string up here, get rebar, I add rebar, and I'm going to add, let's say, half a ton, which will give me actually 0 0.5050 tons. Now, previously in the bill of materials, we had 0.1865. If I click OK here, then that has added 0 0.5050 tons to bring it up to 0.74. And now, theoretically, my rebar totals match my actual design totals for, for rebar. That is the real purpose of extra base materials. Close this. I'm also going to close this file here and not save it. And that concludes the extra base of materials assemblies tutorial.